All right, fam, so we are back at it again with another crazy video. Now, first off, I just wanna say this. I know I've been wearing the same jacket, same sweater, and like, the last three, four videos. Hey, look, 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 look. This is all, oh snap, okay, hold on. This is all filmed in the same day, okay? So I just want that, I just want to put that out there. This is all filmed in the same day. I, I'm not dirty, I don't stink, I got other sweaters, okay? Anyways, man, uh, we back at it again with another video and this is from the whatever.com podcast. I doubt that's their podcast now. I think it's just whatever podcast. But anyways, uh, yeah, so we got Michael. I don't know how to say his nice name. Michael Knowles. N Michael Knowles. We're just going to say that. Michael Knowles. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comment section below. But we got Michael confronts religious OnlyFans girl for blasphemy. Without further ado, man, hit the like button, scratch on post notifications. Let's get it. Let's go. So who here is religious? Just curious. I, be I believe in God. Believe in God? I but consider... Like, are, are you Christian right? or... Or more just you generally believe. So, yeah. Wait. Love Cindy, you're Christian? Yeah, I believe in God. I see you're wearing a cross there. I am. Catholic. Catholic, okay. Which I was going to ask you, do you still think that I should wear a cross when I'm making the, my OF content? Well, we had a sort of viral exchange about that. The first thing I wanted to fir first bring up, bring up is your Instagram, Nick. If you're able to bring up her. Whoa. What the hell? Wait, Nick, make it bigger. Make it bigger. Like zoom it in just to the top. I don't. I don't need to see the photos. Hey, yo, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm gonna try to blur that out on my end. Okay, my bad, guys. Make it bigger. Like zoom it in just to the top. I don't. I don't need to see the photos. I can see past you. You got it, nigga. Talking. Cindy Zhang, God first. Now, right below god first in your instagram profile is a link to your website which inevitably re pretty much redirects essentially to your OnlyFans account where you make pornographic content that's interesting to me so god first it's almost black i don't know if it's if that meets the definition of blasphemy but literally below it is a link to your pornographic content explain that to me make that make sense there's nothing wrong with the content that I make, and I don't think God is shaming me for anything that I am doing right now, so okay. there's nothing wrong. Yeah, uh, that's not the best answer, but a, a good answer like, would be... Like, what do you want me to say? Well, you might say hypocrisy is the tribute vice pays to virtue, and, you know, you believe in God, but you're kind of doing things that maybe are contrary to that, but you're kind of working on it, and so I wouldn't, you know, the better thing to do would be keep the necklace and, you know, give up the OnlyFans stuff, but the fact that you've got that reminder there is probably good, because there's, it's a reminder that we... We worship the things that we spend all of our time and our affection on, right? And so you can come to worship money, and you can come to worship sex, and you come to worship all sorts of false gods, or you can worship the real God. And, and furthermore, you become what you worship. So the, the, <laughs> when you worship something, you just become more like it. And, uh, I agree with and that. And you're torn between two gods, right? So you're... And, and you're torn right. between two gods, there's only one god. Right. Well, they're false gods. There are plenty of false gods, right? We make false gods out of money and sex and vanity and, and ourselves. Anything that you're putting above God. Okay. Basically. Yeah. So, so, like, so you, you, and you're kind of, it seems to me. You're, I'm not putting anything above God. God is first. And I like, if, I pray every single day. I'm very blessed with my job. He actually blessed me with everything. I came from nothing, literally. But like, if, you know, if you believe in God and you think that like, uh, you believe in like the Christian God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then, you know, you would say, well, um. There's so there's God and then there's Satan. What I should have said on the other podcast was that well, Satan is trying to sway you from believing in God. Well, so the, que the question that I asked was, uh, so I think it was, well, my question, I think the first question was. Let, let, let me, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. This is a reaction channel. I got to pause. Look, I just want to say this. First thing first, and I'm not going to pause a lot throughout this video. I just want to give this one thought. Number one sweetheart you saying that you pray every day you saying god bless you with your job god bless you with it do you not realize the devil can technically bless you think about it like this when jesus was in the desert okay he was in the wilderness you know what i'm saying being tempted you know he was fasting for 40 days 40 nights didn't the devil tell jesus i will give you all of this if you bow down and worship me I'm just saying, sweetheart, y'all got to stop. First of all, you got a lowercase g in your bio. You said God first. So that means 
Yo, Lord KG is first. Yo, the God, your OnlyFans is your God. Your, your money is your God. Your body is your God. That is your God. That's Lord KG. See, I worship Big G. I worship Capital G God. That's who I worship. You know what I'm saying? I I don't have other gods. When I say God is first, I mean God is first. Okay? Don't get me wrong. Do do sometimes we we put you know, our money above God. Do sometimes we put these things above God? When you are putting these things above God, you have to literally repent from putting certain things above God. It's been times where I had, I did put, you know, my finances and how I was going to pay bills before God, because I didn't, I didn't have the faith to believe that he was going to make a way, you know what I'm saying? So it's been times like that. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. But when I say I don't put nothing above God, like right now in my life, I make sure that God is first. I, I make sure that I'm putting him first in everything that I do. When I say put him first, it's not just, oh, I pray every morning. I wake up every morning and I just get down on my knees and I say, Lord, Lord, Lord. Like, yes, I don't do exactly that every single morning. But when I say I put God first, I mean that literally he's first in my finances. He's first in my career. He's first in every way, every path that I take. I literally pray and say, Lord, have your way. Let your will be done. But I'm not going to do anything that is con that is contrary to his word. His word tells us about sexual mortality. His word tells us about leading men astray, leading men to lust after you. His word tells us about this. Promiscuous women. His word tells us about these things. So I'm not going to go ahead and do anything that is contrary to his word that's one thing i'm not going to do i can't say god first but i'm doing everything contrary to his word what you're doing is something that's contrary to his word it does not say in the bible where he's going to bless you to be able to make all this money by selling your body your body is sacred baby your body is a is a temple of the holy spirit and you just going out and selling it for money this ain't even your body yo you was bought with a high price like is you okay i'm just saying this is the truth this is the word of god y'all the word of god if you say God is first, then that means God has to be first before anything else. He has to be first before your, your, your career. He has to be first before the things that he blessed you with. It's a lot of times that we spend more time with the blessing than rather the creator that gave us the blessing. I'll let y'all sit on that. Do you think God wants, wants you making porn? To your, and your answer was... I said, okay, the first time I said yes, yeah. but and then, what well, and I wanted to just change my, res like, I think that there's nothing wrong with what I, what I do, and, um, well, the, the yeah. exchange we had, my, my follow-up question was, if God wants you to be a porn star, what do you think Satan wants? <laughs> Say it wants you to sway you from believing in God's purpose. Okay, but your, so, res your response was Satan would want you to not do porn and God would want you to do porn. Yeah, my response was that. Mm -hmm. But like, I understand where you're saying like people are can be lusting over porn mm -hmm. and like yeah. sex work content. You obviously that's their, don't really that's their, cho that's their choice, but what I'm doing, I'm not harming anybody. But, but the, the uh, religion that you profess to believe in doesn't just boil down to, hey, don't harm anybody. That's, that's just like libertarianism. <laughs> you know, the religion that you say that you believe in has 10 commandments, the sixth of which is uh, to uh, not commit adultery. And the God that you profess to believe in says that if you look on a woman with lust, that is the same as adultery. And the religion that you profess to believe in has a, a sexual ethic that, that accompanies it. And so you might say, well, I don't believe in any of that stuff. I just believe in a, a version of that, that God that I've fashioned after my own preferences. But that gets to the very point we were just talking about, which is you're in this struggle between which God you're, you're going to worship. And I, I can tell you're struggling with that because you, you protest too much. You put in your bio. I put God first, right, among all of this kind of lusty stuff. And so you're struggling with it. A lot of people struggle with that. I'm not struggling with it. I, I pray every day. I believe you pray every day. And, and I, I still stand by the fact that he's blessed, like, ever since I got baptized and I started following God's path. He's blessed me with every opportunity I have been given to me, and I'm very grateful. I would not like sit here and like say that he hasn't done anything for me and no, like, God's and, done like i'm not grateful or yeah, anything yeah. like that but, but like with the fact of like um you know like sinning from lusting and watching i get all that but that's their choice at the end of the day not mine um and yeah like 
I don't think God. Oh, you're saying it's only it's only a sin to look at the not to produce the. I'm not making on my on my OnlyFans, so. I mean, you kind of are, aren't you? Like. Being naked is considered a sin. It's well, it's, it is. Po- it's considered yeah. porn. Yeah. Yeah. We all sin though every day. We do. I'm, I'm just saying. Look, I'm I'm not knocking you. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying you you. The fact that you would have that on, on this page that has a bunch of on you say, but I put God first, I to me would imply that you are struggling between what you I'm really not struggling. Uh, so says you. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not struggling. I believe in God every day. And I, I'm, I, I, I bet you do to a large degree. But when those two things come into conflict, when you say, I believe in God, I believe in the Bible, I believe in Christianity, and God and the Bible and Christianity say, hey, don't engage in promiscuity and sexual immorality and you know sex outside of marriage and this that and the other thing uh you're you have to face a choice well do do i pursue that god or the god of do as thou wilt and go have sex and go produce porn or whatever those things are going to come into conflict and so you have to come to a decision and you can you can pick one or the other but that will become your god and you will become more like the god that you worship okay well i worship a god that like walks on earth with grace and dignity and um, I feel nothing wrong with what I'm doing right now. Do you really not? So, so then how do you answer like the sixth commandment? How do I answer six? What is the sixth commandment? Thou shalt not commit adultery and uh, more broadly speaking, uh, sexual immorality. If, if, the, if your chosen profession is sexual immorality, how do you reconcile that with the, the the faith? Okay, but still, like, there's nothing wrong with that. Even people who are but, but the religion um, says there is something wrong with mm-hmm. that, and and you say you believe in the religion, so mm-hmm. so then you got then you might say, well, I actually don't believe in the religion, but you but you just said I you do. do believe in it. I exactly. do believe in so, God. So then, how do you reconcile those mm-hmm. that conflict? There's nothing to reconcile because the religion no- says don't do this. You say I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. How do you rec- you have to reconcile that or <laughs> Or you have to say, I don't believe in the one. I, I only believe in the other. He's no, not God. I'm, you don't have to, like, I, I'm yourself. just saying, like, there's... Really- and then, of course, you have people like her, people that's going, he's not God. You have to justify yourself. Michael is being... Bro, this is, like, this is so true. Everything he's saying is truth, okay? Like, literally... And I, the only thing I don't agree with the part is religion. I don't believe that, you know the god that she claims to worship okay which is yahweh uh, i'm assuming that's the god she claims to worship it's all about a relationship that's the only thing i disagree but it's nothing too big it's nothing to have a whole conflict about you know what i'm saying i just know they're using it for the lack of just the conversation of just religion you know what i'm saying but he's right you you have to reconcile that like you can't say that you believe in this one god But does one God say, hey, I don't want you doing this, my daughter, but you say, no, I'm going to do this. You telling God what you're not what you're going to do instead of going and doing what he say does do. That's going to lead you to hell. That's going to lead you to 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 eternity uh, damnation, just further away from God, just fully out of out of place of God's presence. That's what that's going to lead you to. If you continue to want to live in your sin, you say, I don't see nothing wrong with you. You don't see nothing wrong because you are fighting between the spiritual battle. The devil is having you believe certain things that is not true. That's the same thing that he did for Eve in the garden. He made her believe this stuff. He made her think that she could do this and do that. He made her, he influenced her to, to eat that apple. He influenced her, which she ended up influencing her uh, husband, Adam. To eat the apple. Now we all in sin. You say that we all sin. Okay, yeah, we all sin. We all sin. But does that give us the right to continue to be comfortable in our sin? You may sin. Yes, you do sin. I sin. I'm not perfect. But does that give me the right to be comfortable in my sin? No, that is not. I am not comfortable in my sin. And I refuse to be comfortable in my sin. I refuse to because I don't want to have my soul burn for eternity. I don't. I don't want to be far away from God for eternity because I know how that could possibly feel. It, it hurts to be far away from God on earth. It's been times where I done sinned and called myself a believer, but because I, I done sinned in the, in the Lord's presence, okay? I done, you know, watched porn and, and had sex outside of marriage, and I done did these things, and there was times where the Holy Spirit would convict me, and it would feel like I was so far away from God. That right there, 
felt terrible. So if that felt terrible in the physical realm, I know it's going to feel even worse in the spiritual realm because your spirit is automatically connected to God. Everyone knows there is a God. Your spirit is connected to the Lord. Okay, it's connected. But at the end of the day, we have to work right now to make a choice whether or not we want to be one with God, whether we want to be in the presence of God, or we want to be down there with the devil. We, Because hell was meant for the devil and his angels. It was never meant for us. We are all children of God. But however, you are, if you continue to seek a relationship with God, you will be a child of God. But if you continue to seek a relationship with the devil, you'll be a child of the devil. And guess where you're going to end up? Exactly where he's at. You have to pick and choose whether or not who you're going to follow. Don't get mis Don't allow the devil to consume your mind with false, with false ideology. Don't ideology. Is that even a word? Ideology? I, bro, what did I just say? <laughs> don't allow the devil to confuse you with nonsense. You can't allow the devil to confuse you with nonsense. You have to be strong in Christ and you have to be in a relationship with Christ. You praying to God, that's good. Keep praying. But if you're not in the word, if you're not, if you're not praising him each and every day, if you're not, if you're not even trying to build a relationship with him, how are you going to be in a relationship with God? How are you going to be in a relationship with God? I could talk to you all day long, but does that mean that we're in a community relationship? No, a relationship is me spending time with you. I have to spend time in your presence. How do I get to know a person? I talk to them. I spend time with them. I start to understand things about them, but we will never understand things about God until we open the Holy Bible. That's how you build a relationship with God. Open up the Bible. Seek after his presence. See how he sounds. See how he speaks. You will know these things and you will live your life according to the word of God. You will live your life for God and not for man. You will live your life for God and not for the devil. Let's finish. Uh -huh. Take, take like, what applies. Take what applies. Number one, drop like, whatever doesn't to you. Number one, if that we makes said, you happy. We, no. sin, we yeah, all sin. That's the second number two, just, which is, you know, make a God out of yourself and your own autonomy. Number two, you don't really know me. I'm, well, I'm not you judging really you in any me. way. I'm just asking. So, but, I'm just, but of the information and, that yeah. he has based off, you know, you wear a cross while you shoot your pornography. Okay, and you can make that judgment. And I'm not making it, any judgment. You've you made, are. You, I'm not. You've made you two, are, You've though. made two statements, and they contradict each other, right? You've said, I believe in God. I believe in the Christian religion. I, I believe in the Bible and the Ten Commandments and all the rest of it. And I believe that the thing that I'm doing that is explicitly prohibited by my religion is good. And I'm saying you can only believe one of those two things coherently because they contradict one another. And, and I'm, I'm not knocking you. I'm not saying you have to make an account of your life or anything. I actually believe you're most likely already struggling with that because you have both of those things very explicitly. I'm not struggling, Instagram actually. And, it's, and it would be unusual for people in your profession to have that kind of a profession of faith at the top. And I think it's good that you have it. And I think it's good that you wear the cross. And I think it's good that you're praying. But you're going to have to reconcile that conflict eventually. I don't think I have to reconcile anything. Can like I, say I still think That's that like God gave me this opportunity. <laughs> Gotta take a drink on that too, bro. <laughs> Cause she's she's stressing me out. To do what I do. Um and I'm very happy. Wait, God gave you the opportunity to make pornographic content? Adult content. Oh, excuse me. Adult content. Um do you wear you wear uh, do you wear your cross while you're making the pornographic content? Like is it is it in the final product? I wear my. Like if you you're wear distributing, a jewelry, you wear it everywhere you go. Sure, but if so you're distributing if you're videos and a photos, making a video, it's gonna, you know. Yeah. Well, not. Yeah, I mean, oh, not, am I gonna take it off when I'm like? Right, because okay. then, then you would to, have to acknowledge that there's a problem. I, tell you, I wear a scapular, you know, just like a Catholic, Catholic version of that right here. And uh, if I'm gonna commit a sin or something, I f I feel an impulse to uh, take it off because I think, oh, it's kind of sacrilegious mm -hmm. if I'm like committing. And, but then, then I think like, well, I probably just shouldn't commit the sin, right? You know, and then I don't need to reconcile it. But it, it is that kind of conflict. And I also wear it just because I feel like I'm protected um, and God always is. It's a symbol of a broader grace from yes, God. Yes, yeah. definitely. And there's only one God and I, I don't, I'm not like, recon I'm not doing any of that, so what you, you were saying. You think that the the pro prohibitions of sexual immorality in the Bible are just optional? It's not optional. It's, you have to follow his path and his words and not s to lie, steal, and all those stuff. Those are not good. Um, I, don't, like, I don't partake in those acts. Uh, and but you, you do. I'm, uh, like, I'm not telling tales out of school. You do partake in sexual immorality. It's your job. 
So you're saying, okay, the lying is bad, I'm going to follow that one. The stealing is bad, I'm going to follow that one. But ah, the Sixth Commandment, we're going to skip over that one. And uh, what's the Seventh one? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that one, that one too. Is that it? You're saying some of it's op optional and some of it's mandatory? Or, or you're saying that you have a conflict and you're just trying to work it out, which is probably actually what's going on. I'm not, but I enjoy what I do, so... I really don't like I really do not think uh, there's anything wrong with my job so if the if the Bible says it is that there is something wrong then you don't believe the Bible not everything in the Bible is true in the Bible Nickelodeon is donated is $200 not everything is you say you pray all the time but you forget the important part listening Maybe God brought you here to realize the mistakes you're making and change. Instead, you get defensive and don't listen. Hey, Nickelodeon, thank you for the uh, TTS. Thank hey, you for the TTS. Well, you $200? Let me start streaming. I'll just play. <laughs> uh, if you guys want to continue on, I mean, I think you're actually making a very interesting point. Um, I mean, Cindy, did you do want to respond? He, Michael, Michael was saying that, well, if the Bible says X, but you, it sounds like you don't believe in, I don't want to, if you want yeah, to restate yeah, your point. Actually, sure, yeah. you, you, you're saying, that I, I don't, I don't, I don't have a conflict here. Amendment. I don't think anything that I'm doing is wrong, but the Bible says that the thing you're doing is wrong. And so again, I'm not, not thumping on the Bible here. I'm just trying to make sense of the two things you've said that, are, that contradict one another. Okay. Me partaking in adult content is contradicting what the Bible says about the sexual immorality. Yeah. Sexual immorality. Okay. Uh, or you know the uh, woman at the well, or you know any, right. any number of books of the Old Testament. Right. So. I sh I just feel like even like people who are a prostitute, who like whatever, like in sexual content, they're they're really not doing anything wrong. Like at the end of the day, but they're Christianity still... says they are, and Christianity says you're welcome to come in, and you are afforded the grace of God, and you can have redemption. And but but Christianity also says go forth and sin no more. So is her choice to then reject the religion? Uh... Well, I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, I would recommend uh, keeping your faith. Do you and, think and that God loves everyone? Yes. Okay, so... But God loves you too much to keep you as you are. <laughs> is, is the hey! And so I'm not suggesting you abandon your faith at all. I'm suggesting you abandon the things that you're doing that contradict your professed faith. Because otherwise, you won't actually have your faith. You'll, you'll, have, you will have deluded yourself into telling yourself you believe in this religion when you consciously reject important parts of it. Well, there's a lot of important parts of believing And you should believe all in the of religion. It. Yeah. Wow, bro, I didn't know Michael was like that. I didn't know Michael was like that. That man broke down that junk so well, y'all. I have no, I have nothing to say because he broke it down so well. He broke it down so we all can understand. If you don't understand that, then I don't know. But he broke it down so we all can understand. Hey, I'm just saying, y'all, this is my thoughts on this video. Number one, I understand you say you don't think you're doing nothing wrong. You don't think you're doing nothing wrong because you're comfortable in your sin. Of course, when you're comfortable in your sin, you don't think nothing is wrong with it. I was comfortable in pornography. So, of course, I didn't think nothing was wrong with me watching porn. I was comfortable in that. It was, it was, an, it, it, it was a stress relief for me. I didn't think nothing was wrong with that. You say that, oh, don't Jesus, uh, don't, don't you, uh, don't Jesus say that he loves everyone? Do you think Jesus loves everyone? Yes, Jesus does love everyone. But like Michael said, he loves you too much to keep you the same, to keep you for, for, for continue to do these things that's against God. You know what I'm saying? If a person loves you so much, not only will they give you truth, they will also help you to change your ways when they know that you're headed for destruction. Th and that's exactly what Jesus does. He loves you so much that he's trying to keep you from headed down to hell. So he wants you to repent and turn away from your sins. That's what Jesus wants you to do. But no, we're so comfortable in our sin that we don't want to turn away. We enjoy our sins so much that we just, we believe or we try to turn Jesus into something that we want him to be. So because we love porn, because we love sexual mortality, we want Jesus to also love those things too. But Jesus doesn't love those things. Those things are sin. Jesus loves you and he does not love your sin. He hates the sin, but he loves you and he wants you to change. 
He wants you to change. This is all Bible. You say that everything in the Bible is not truth. Then how in the world can you believe in a God if you don't believe in his word? You don't believe in everything in his word, but you believe in this one God. You believe in this one God because you was raised to believe in this one God. Instead of seeking truth for yourself, you was raised to believe that, oh yeah, God this and God that. And you believe all the scriptures that the pastor used to tell you or the scriptures that your mother used to tell you, but you're not getting into the word of God yourself to see these scriptures, to see more. It's deeper than love. It's deeper than, God. oh, Jesus loves you. Jesus said, don't judge. It's deeper than that. It's so deeper than that. Michael is not judging you. No one is judging you. We just want you to understand exactly what the Bible is telling us. We cannot live in darkness and also live in the light. We cannot. We, the, Jesus said that he will spit you off from his mouth because you're neither hot nor cold. He would rather you be cold than hot. He would rather you be hot than cold. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, Jesus just don't want you to be lukewarm. Don't be in and out of the church. Don't be in and out of prayer. Don't be in and out of a relationship with him. You pick and choose whether you're going to be hot or you'll be cold. Okay, you got to pick and choose. You cannot be both. You cannot want God and also want the devil. You cannot eat at the table with Jesus and also want to eat with the devil. You cannot. You cannot. You have to pick and choose. You have to. You're neither hot nor cold. He will spit you out from your mouth. He would rather you be hot with him. He would rather you be with him rather than be in a world. He would rather that. But God loves you so much that he gives you the choice to pick and choose whether or not you want to be with him or not. He loves you so much that he won't even force you into the kingdom of heaven. He won't even force you into the kingdom of heaven because he loves you so much. He will see you separated from him because you don't want that. You don't want to be with him. So he will see you separated from him. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he loves you. That he won't even force you to be in a relationship with him. But if you want a relationship with God, then you need to see God with all your heart. You got to come out of that, that, that immortality. You got to come out of that. You have to. The Bible says dress, dress modest. You, you feel like you're not doing anything with your body or anything. You feel like you're not doing nothing wrong. You feel like you're not doing nothing wrong. Number one, you're comfortable. Number two, you feel like, you know, because this is what the devil is telling you that, oh, everyone does it. This is how God, this is how you make your money. God bless you with these things. No, the devil bless you with these things. The devil is continuing to allow you to do these things or influence you to keep doing these things because it's bringing you some type of money. But you don't know that your body was bought with a price. You don't understand that your body is sacred to the Lord. Your body is, is, is more, it's important. Your body is important. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. But yet you just allow every man to see your body. The only person that will see your body is your husband. Is your husband. You're causing men to fall short. You believe that you're not doing anything wrong. You believe that it's the self problem with men. But it's also a problem with you also. It, it, you may think, oh, oh, because I walk outside. Uh, or let's say like this. I have a group of friends. I have a group of friends. And let's say. Oh, no, let's say I have one friend. I have one friend, and I know that he just got saved. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm smoking weed. He just came from, like, he don't want to smoke weed no more. He is done with that. He want to live his life for God. He want to be sober-minded. And But I'm just smoking weed around him. I'm just smoking weed around him. And I pass him the blunt. Now, because he's, a, because he's not strong in his faith, Yet, because he's not strong in his faith and the devil is still kind of trying to pull him towards him and God's trying to pull him towards him, he go, he go take a hit of the blunt. He go take a hit of the blunt. He take a hit of the blunt and he pass it back to me. Boom, boom, boom. We going back and forth with the blunt. Whatever. Okay, cool. Now, I could say, oh, it was his fault. It was. His. I feel like I didn't do anything wrong. I feel like it wasn't nothing I did wrong. It was him. He's the one that took the blunt. But guess what I did? I influenced him. I influenced him because of my darkness. I influenced him to hit the blunt. I influenced him to do these things. So guess what? His blood is on my hands because I influenced him. I led him to the lead. I led him down to destruction. I influenced him to do the things that he was already trying to stay away from. Now, real friend will be like, hey, yo, look, bro, I'm not even going to smoke around you. I'm not even going to do this around you because I don't want to cause you to fall short of your glory. I don't want to cause you to fall short of God's glory. I don't want you to fall short of that. I don't want you to go back into this sin. I don't want you to, you know what I'm saying? That That is a good good friend that's what i would do you feel me a good friend would do that but a, a friend would be like oh it's not my fault he didn't want to hit the blunt but you know that he's trying to stay away from this that's like a man that is struggling with lust and you come around him half butt naked you can't say oh it's his fault that he's lusting no look at how you dressing it's also your fault too because you led this man to lust 
We have to be better as a body of Christ. We can't lead other people to, to fall short of God's glory. We need to uplift each other. We need to build each other up. I can't take you to a strip club knowing that your struggle is sexual mortality. If I have a brother who struggles with sexual mortality, why would I take him to a strip club? That's just me leading him astray from God. That's just me influencing him to do things that he don't want to do for real. Yes, every man for themselves, every man has their own mind. But at the end of the day, we have to understand that a lot of people are not strong in the faith yet. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of things that I can't be around because I'm not super, I'm not super strong in the faith yet. You feel me? It's a lot of movies I still can't watch because I'm not strong in the faith yet. And I'm and I'm I'm not afraid to admit that. I've been saved for what two years? Two years, and I'm still have my struggles, but I'm not comfortable with my sin. I'm continuing to live a life of repentance. And I'm not afraid to admit that. Like I have those struggles. I have those struggles, but I know that when the devil is trying to talk to me and tell me to do certain things that's outside the will of God, I already know that that was the devil. That wasn't God telling me, hey, yeah, go watch porn. No, that's the devil. I have a wife. I'm not doing that. I'm not bringing these demons and opening portals for uh, demons to come in and attack my marriage. I'm not doing that. That's the devil. You see what I'm saying? We got to understand the voice from the devil and we got to understand the voice from the God. How do you understand God's voice? How do you hear God's voice? God is not going to always speak to you in an audible voice. And I struggle with trying to hear him in an audible voice. He speaks to you in every given way that he wants to speak to you. But we have to read his word to understand his voice. How you understand, how you know the devil? The devil is always trying to speak to you and trying to influence you to do things that's outside the will of God. And he will make you think that this is God telling you to do these things. But in reality, it's him. The devil comes to, he, he comes in like a snake. He's sneaky. He's sneaky. He's very clever. He will make you, he will tell you Bible verses to make you, to make you commit your sin. The one verse he used to always tell me is it, uh, is every, uh, what is it? Um, the righteous man falls seven times, but get back. He will literally tell me that scripture over and over again. I will be just falling for you, right? The righteous man falls seven times. Oh, oh, and I'm doing things that I shouldn't be doing. You know what I'm saying? Then I feel so guilty and he will, and then he will bash you for it. Look at you. God ain't going to forgive you. God ain't going to do this. And then that will have you in a mindset to think like, man, I ain't ready for this walk. I ain't ready for this walk. Now he just pulled you back into the world telling you, bro, y'all got to be, y'all got to be careful of the devil, man. He's clever. He's out here. He's, he's like a lion sneaking, ready to devour. He come to kill, steal and destroy. He's out here, man. He would disguise himself as an angel of light. That's what the Bible tells us. Y'all have to be aware, man. Be aware. Anyways, man, I love each and every one of y'all, bro. Uh, God loves y'all. Man, all these videos have been like 20 minutes long, y'all. This is crazy. But God loves y'all, man. Uh, God bless. Stay blessed. Get saved. Repent. Okay? Jesus loves y'all, man. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.